Okay, Suraj, so you've asked, uh, you have a doubt in this question. Uh, the figure shown, the instantaneous speed of the end A of this rod is V to the left. And uh, we have to find out the angular velocity of the rod given that the length is L. Now, um, the question you have to ask is, uh, why is there 30 degrees and 60 degrees? Is it, is it in any way helpful or is it not? Uh, just, I mean, does it, is it helpful only because we know the ratios, the trigonometric ratios of these angles, or is there something else also going on? So first of all, let's consider a more gen generic case. So here, instead of 30 degrees, we have alpha. Instead of 60 degrees, we have theta. And you can see the diagram as labeled. AB is the rod. C is this point uh, where the inclined wall joins the floor. Uh, v is the speed of A towards the left. U is the speed of B along the wall uh, uh, downwards. And then uh, using uh, uh, geometry, we can see that the angle ABC is theta minus alpha. So we've labeled that AC is equal to X, BC is equal to Y, AB is equal to L. That's a constant. Uh, v is dx by dt, and u will be dy by dt. Now, we can use the sine rule for uh, triangle ABC, and we get x by sine of theta minus alpha is equal to L divided by sine of 180 degrees minus theta. And uh, that gives us sine of theta minus alpha equals x by L times sine theta. Differentiating this equation with respect to t, we will get minus cos of theta minus alpha uh, d alpha by dt <coughs> is equal to sine theta by L times dx by dt. Uh, moving things around and remembering that dx by dt is v, we'll get d alpha by dt is equal to minus sine theta by L cos of theta minus alpha times v. Pretty straightforward differentiation, nothing fancy. We can use the cosine rule now. <coughs> we get uh, y squared is equal to L squared plus x squared minus 2LX cos alpha. Again, we differentiate this with respect to T. We get 2Y uh, dy by dt is equal to 2X dx by dt minus 2L times cos alpha dx by dt minus X sine alpha d alpha by dt. And now we found d alpha by dt in the previous slide using the sine rule. So we're going to substitute it here. And we're also going to replace dx by dt with v. Yeah? So we get 2 at dy by dt with u. So 2yu is equal to 2xv minus 2l v cos alpha minus x sine alpha into minus sine theta by l cos theta minus alpha times v. Uh, doing a little more juggling, we get uh, u is equal to this expression. v times x by y minus l by y into cos alpha plus x sine alpha sine theta divided by L cos of theta minus alpha. Now you can uh, do a little more uh, simplification in terms of trigonometry. But uh, just to let you know that uh, right away in the problem, we do not have the values x and y, which are labeled in red. Now it is true you can use the sine rule uh, and get x and y in terms of the given angles, yeah, the angles alpha, theta, as well as the length L. It is possible. Uh, but that requires a little more trigonometry. But right here itself, you need to see that this expression is quite complex. You know, just because I know uh, the ratios does not necessarily mean that I'm getting something that I can deal with. Also, we have to find the angular uh, velocity right, of this rod. We have so far only found the linear velocity of B. So now we need to consider the uh, the components of v and u perpendicular to the rod. Yeah, so we have the components v sine alpha and u sine of theta minus alpha. Now, because these will not uh, uh, be equal, the instantaneous center of uh, rotation will be somewhere, let's say the point P, at some length L away from uh, the end A. So it's uh, capital L minus small l away from uh, N B. And now we need to do the, uh, you know, find the location of P, yeah, equating the uh, angular velocities uh, that we calculate from U sine of theta minus alpha as well as V sine of alpha.
So there's there's a lot more work that's happening here, and it's a it's a considerable amount of work that is that is going on. And so that itself should let us know that something else is happening in this problem, and that something else is purely geometric. Yeah. Let's go back to that figure. Here you can see this. It says 30 degrees, 60 degrees. We know therefore that the angle ABC is 30 degrees, which means the triangle is isosceles. There is a symmetry happening there. And if we use that symmetry, this is what we will get now. Yeah, We'll get this. We will be able to see that if A is moving towards the left uh, with a speed of V, B must be moving downwards, down the wall, with a speed of V. And the lengths AC and BC are equal. So this symmetry allows us also now to say, you know what, we are going to get a different diagram, a diagram like this for the rotation. And because the components V sine of 30 degrees in both cases is equal, yeah, perpendicular to the, the rod, the instantaneous center of rotation will be the midpoint of AB. Once we realize that calculating omega is a, a trivial matter. So if you, if you actually looked at it from a point of view of geometry and symmetry, all of the earlier sine rule, cosine rule, all of that would just vanish. You don't need that. You don't need the differentiation. You just need this diagram completely simplified and you know that uh, it's trivial after that.